50 people there. <laughs> they got lost. And now we're back on. Okay, give me one brief moment. Okay. Again, thank you for your patience, everybody. Okay, I'm just going to begin this again. The Zohar states in letter 17 that it is the response of an awakening from us, from here below, that we arouse our heart with the attribute of loving kindness and compassion for those that are in need and compassion, that that reciprocates, that mirrors above an arousal of great compassion from God, who is the source of compassion. And that endows us then with, it bears fruit. It bears fruit. What is that fruit? We'll see. But the principle remains until the times of Mashiach. That's the statement. So what is the fruit? The fruit refers to the flow of benevolence that's bestowed from the source of compassion. And it comes downwards into this world and reflects itself or it vests itself in the physical world with blessings. A family life, maintained and waiting that will be truly experienced in the times of Mashiach, the world to come. What is that one mitzvah then? Well, it's the one thing that God himself performs at all times. And what's that? He animates the worlds. He is always creating. He is giving in a man manner of being charitable. You know what? We are ultimately, we are ultimately have nots, right? We didn't create ourselves. We're created and animated at all times by the, by the Almighty. So we are in need of his compassion that he will animate and create us and give us life at all times. And that's what he does. So when we observe the ways of God, which is also the being giving, charitable, to give life to another, that will radiate that in the times of the future, the times of Mashiach, that the magnitude of what we're doing today will be infinitely experienced whereas today we don't today we will experience well we said the fruit that it bears that's not the experience though but we do get an experience before the times of Mashiach and that is in Gan Eden in the Garden of Eden where the souls Go after 120, after we finished our time on earth here. But yet, nation point. And the proof is, that all the souls that are there, the Tanoim and the Amarim, the great sages, who you would think they would have the greatest place in the Garden of Eden above, they're waiting to come back down. 
to be vested, a soul in a body, through Tchiyas Amesim, the resurrection. Why? Because the splendor of godliness will be much greater in the times of Mishiach than it is in the Garden of Eden. Why is that? How do we understand that? Because in the Garden of Eden, the level of light of God, of vitality of God, the revelation of God is from what we call memale kol almin, the light of God that fills the world. And for that light to fill the world, it has to be contracted to fill within the limited, the limited, um, the limited uh, fashion of that world, meaning Garden of Eden. Spiritual world of the Garden of Eden. That's why our sages say they got So we have the soul that leaves this world and goes to the Garden of Eden. It continues its journey and there it gets a light of God that imbues the soul, tantalizing the soul in a delight that it comprehends, apprehends of godliness but it's a contracted light, it's a limited light. As opposed to the times of Mashiach, where it's an infinite light. Now with this, we can understand what our sages use a beautiful metaphor. And they say that in Gan Eden, there's no eating or drinking, but the, but the righteous, they sit with crowns on their heads and they take the light and the radiance of the divine presence. What's this idea of a crown on your head? In Hebrew, that's called keser. Keser calls from the, comes from the criteria, which is like the crown on top of a column. The, the, the crown on top of a column is an interface between the ceiling and the floor to hold together ceiling and floor. So you have a column in the top of the column that's holding it up. That is a metaphor for us to understand that Kesser is a divine um, interface between what we call the Meitzel and the Netzel, between the emanator, God, and the emanations that come from God. You need an interface because between creator and then something of Emanation emanated beings in the worlds of Atsilos. You need an interface between the infinite and now finite because it's a world.
So whereas that which is beyond, we can't experience now, and even in Gan Eden, the crown is on them, above them, beyond them, but in the times of Mashiach, when we will be a soul in a body, and you would think, just like Every conclusion also means to every kolos and efesh, every intense yearning, there's an end. What does that mean? That refers to the soul in Gan Eden, in the Garden of Eden. That's a great yearning. What's it? It's yearning? It wants to climb. It wants to grow. It wants to go from level to level. And hence, for example, a yard site is a time that the soul is climbing up the ladder every year on the day of passing. And the Kaddish had said, and the Kiddush that's made in their honor, that the tzedakah that we give in the honor of that loved one that passed away, allows the soul to ascend on the ladder. Right? And that's why there's, it says about the righteous, and again, we're all righteous once we get to Gan Eden. <laughs> we all make it. Um, through a process, of course. But this is what it means, that, the, that there's no rest, not in this world, not in the next world, because you always have to grow and climb, go up the ladder. However, in the times of Mashiach, Mm. it'll be time that's called Kule Shabbos just all Shabbos entirely Shabbos a time of rest you don't have to climb go up the ladder you don't have to achieve spiritually because then will be revealed the radiance of God's essence that utterly transcends levels of climbing, reaching. So when it comes to revelation, when it comes to light, so there's levels of levels. So we have to climb up the ladder, that's this world. That's in Gan Eden, but ultimately there will be a revelation of the essence of God that is all-encompassing. That transcends levels. Really is the message. Celebrate it. So then we will have a time that will be Kule Shabbos. A day that will be, a time period that will be completely Shabbos. We don't need to fix the world. We don't need to engage with the evils of the world because it won't be. It'll be eradicated. It'll only be the presence of the essence of God that will be the reality of everything revealed. And that's the end game. Again, very uh, counterintuitive to what most people think. All right. Questions, comments, thoughts.
um, the story of uh, Rabbi Yitzhi Hurwitz and um, his, the song that they found on his cell phone. Um, I can do my best, but essentially Rabbi Yitzhi Hurwitz is a, uh, I believe, Denver a Chabad Rav who unfortunately was diagnosed with uh, ALS many years ago. And at this point, or until even a little while ago, I'm not sure right now, he was writing a weekly Dvar Torah using his eyes. Um, yeah. Actually, my sister, my uh, my sister-in-law and him were diagnosed the same week, and they both have the unusual, I can't say it in a good way, but longevity of this horrific disease. And my sister-in-law is also still alive, and both of them have outlived their life expectancy. But Rose Horowitz would write a Dvar Torah every single week on the Haftorah um, using his eyes, which is uh, just unbelievable. But the story I wanted to say was that they, and please correct me if I mess this up, they found in his cell phone a song that he had composed and recorded on his cell phone called Shine a Little Light. Mm-hmm. And they made a video, which I, I, I sent to in the back channel, and be happy to play myself. And I can't watch it without crying. Yeah. But it's basically every major Jewish singer are singing a part of it. And it is so inspiring. And, and included in it is Yitzhi, Rav Yitzhi, I have to say, it's Rav Yitzhi singing it as well. And especially by Hanukkah time, it's so meaningful. And, um, Oh, it's just so uplifting, and, and, and uh, just when you were speaking of it, it just kept coming to me. Um, you know, especially the contrast between the the horrors of, of that disease, but the but the attitude and the and the, and the um, uh, I, I'm grasping for the right word, but the 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 the, 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 the positivity, the the not giving up of. Um, of being in such a situation where, you know, every, where a normal person would be totally justified in being suicidal and depressed, um, it's, it's almost like, uh, you know, Derek Minateva to not be, in my view. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, and and, uh, and I'm sure I'm sure he has his moments as his sister-in-law, but um, again, it, it's just such an inspiring song, and if you Absolutely. know Jewish music, it's. Um, uh, it's everybody, you know, and uh, so I just wanted to share that. Thank you, and, thank and, you. It's great to see you with your Kikiba uh, 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 I will tell you one last thing, which is that I don't know if you realize because we don't talk very often, but, um, I, but I hope you don't put me back under the, the stage. But I am a purebred blood fog. Um, I traced my family from uh, right after the Civil War from a village that led to a town that led to Vilna. And, um, and uh, I, of course, where my grandfather's Yamaka when I was out for many years by Rabbi Kinelski in New Jersey. And um, he, of course, would, you know, give me uh, the, the, you know, the spill kiss over it. And um, it was very funny, real quick, a story that uh, he was giving out this, you know, passing out to the love of him, Esrogen, one year. And somebody had uh, bought, you know, a beautiful silver case. And so he went to the back to get it. And some other guy, you know, and, you know, he's a jovial man. And somebody else said, oh, what do I have to do to get a case like that? He says, you want me to check for $5,000? Um, I'll give you, you know, I'll get you your case. And is the, the, the room they were doing this in was like a, uh, uh, an abandoned classroom where all the books were sitting around. And I found a book there that was just entitled Vilna. So <laughs> I immediately... As yeah, a smart Alex said to the to Rabbi Kanelsky, "How much for this book?" And he says, "That take it, get it far away from here." <laughs> <laughs> it turned out it's a fantastic book. It was written before the war. It's the JPS book, but regardless, it's, uh, uh-huh. it's all good stuff. And, and this year, I will be in New Paltz um, with my daughter um, by uh, the Chabad there, um, in which I call the other Rav Moshe with quotes. <laughs> And Beautiful. So with best, best regards. Um, Thank you. I, in the hope that I could dive from the Ahmed, I immediately went and bought it in the Sahari Master. Beautiful. Ksiva, Ksiva, Teva, Lashana, Teva, Mesukha. 
to you. Thank you for sharing. Amen. Uh, That's it. No. And how and how would he even open a safe room to prepare? It's from his knowledge and things like that. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's